Hey, what up, everybody? Stephen Breach coming to you. Uh, would you be surprised if I wanted to tell you that, honestly, one of the matches that I'm looking forward to the most on the SummerSlam pay-per-view that's coming up live from Los Angeles in the Staples Center is Cody Rhodes going up against Damian Sandow. And if they involve in the uh, Money in the Bank briefcase, it's going to make it even better. Honestly, to me, if you go through the history of time, when you break up tag teams, uh, you know, especially credible name tag teams uh, like... Um, who can we go through? Diesel and Shawn Michaels, and they broke up uh, Strike Force uh, when Rick Martel walked out on Tito Santana. Uh, you talk about the Rockers with Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty, uh, just to name a few. Uh, you know, it makes for really, really cool, awesome storylines that always pay off for me in a really, really good match. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Damian Sandow, but I know that Cody Rhodes can honestly go out there with almost anybody on the whole roster and put on a damn wrestling clinic. Cody Rhodes is the guy that I've honestly been saying that I've been rooting for for a long time. And uh, I remember at WrestleMania time when these guys got left off the WrestleMania pay-per-view, I was really bumming for Cody. I mean, Cody's a guy that had big matches in uh, three WrestleManias in a row. Uh, when I was sitting in my seat at WrestleMania 26, I was saying that, you know, I picked uh, Ted DiBiase to win that match. But uh, I said, if Cody doesn't win this match, honestly, I bet they'll release this guy within three months. I really didn't see him going on anywhere after the whole legacy storyline. I just, it wasn't so much that I wasn't a fan of the guy. I just really didn't think that he was going to catch on. I, I, I looked at him and his size, and I just didn't really think that he would be able to find his niche. And next thing you know, you roll around to WrestleMania 27. He's wrestling against uh, freaking... Rey Mysterio and DiBiase has uh, started his streak of being left off the card. Um, I don't know whatever happened to Ted DiBiase, but um, you know wherever he is, he pops up in some videos every once in a while, and I read about him on some house show uh, results. Uh, just um, I don't know where it went wrong for him. I, I remember reading a report about a year ago. He was at this make his mind up if he wanted to go to L.A. and try to become a movie star or if he wanted to be a pro wrestler. And um, I didn't, never really heard anything about it, but I just keep reading his name in places. And every once in a while, his name pops up as a, po a guy possibly waiting to return. He's just one of those guys sitting at home, like Ezekiel Jackson, just waiting for that, that phone to call. And, uh, you know, he was like Dennis Stamp, waiting for that last shot, I guess. But um, I really wish, you know, I brought up them being left off the WrestleMania card. But um, to me, honestly, uh, Sandow who I'm not really that big of a fan of, you know, and Rhodes got left off the pay-per-view of WrestleMania. It sort of shows you, honestly, since the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, these guys really haven't done anything. I know that they, you know, they did the big press conference saying that they were breaking up, and then it was the end of the team, and they were going their separate ways, but staying best friends, and next thing you know, one show led to two shows, led to three shows, all on this, some sort of a reunion tour, um, but it was like, they already announced that they were done, why did they keep tagging? And, um, you know, right before Money in the Bank, they really beefed up this best friends angle, saying that they weren't going to turn on each other and both of them were going to win. I should have seen the uh, the writing on the wall. I've seen it a thousand times in other different angles. And um, I didn't catch it in this one. Sandow was able to go out there and win it. He won it by, you know, shoving his best friend off the top of the ladder, pushing him out of the way to make sure he got that top spot. I think everybody, uh, you know, in their uh, work life, has sort of seen this happen with themselves or somebody else, just somebody, you know, wanting to get that, uh, that, that, you know, push at work, uh, trying to, you know, get up the ladder, you know, it doesn't matter who it is, they're going to throw somebody under the bus, it's just the way, you know, the world is, it sucks, um, you know, trying to make sure that I'm never that guy shoving anybody off, but I can honestly tell you that I've been shoved a thousand times, but, uh, this is the match that it's really going to make it a break from, break, it's going to make it or break it for me on Damian Sandow, um, I've seen a lot of this guy's matches. Uh, I remember when he first debuted WrestleMania 27 town, uh, 27 time. It seemed like he was the talk of the town, and um, everybody really liked him. I didn't really ever see it. I saw him as a guy that wore pink tights and did cartwheels. If you go out there and talk for uh, you know an hour and give a, you know, a good long promo and fill some time, but he really wasn't any really saying anything that caught on with me. I've seen this a thousand times. To me, it just seemed sort of seemed like a ripoff of the. Uh, of the genius from back in the day, coming out there with Mr. Perfect with his uh, cape and his script, saying how smart he was, you know, saying poems and this, that, and the other. Um, but when it came down to work, uh, it just really didn't catch on with me. Um, sure, he's an awful fine wrestler, but he's just somebody who doesn't really catch on with me.
Cody Rhodes, like I said, is a guy that, you know, I think it's maybe his amateur wrestling style that, that uh, comes from uh, his past uh, with high school, and I think he even wrestled in college. Really like that dude, and that, that's a match that I was honestly really, really looking forward to. I don't honestly see Cody winning this match. I think that Sandow will win it, but it, I think the, the fans have really caught on with Cody, uh, giving him the baby face pop and, and you know making sure he's the guy that people are going to get behind. But uh, I'm pretty sure Sandow's going to walk out with this. I know that they have done a Money in the Bank uh, briefcase switch before uh, with Mr. Kennedy, uh, Kennedy uh, but then mostly that was because uh, they needed somebody to beat, um, uh, take the title off of uh, Undertaker. Yeah, Undertaker got hurt. He was the champ. They were already planning on Kennedy uh, taking the title from him. They already had him sat down, had to talk with him, told him how it was going to happen, and then he fucking happened to get hurt as well. So they uh, sure had him show up on Monday Night Raw, had him switch the briefcase over to Edge, and uh, history was made right there as the, uh, I guess you can say, the first guy to ever uh, cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase twice. He was the first guy to ever have it as well. And um, the first time he ever saw the uh, briefcase ever switch hands. It had been used... Uh, with Edge and Matt Hardy and their storyline when Hardy came back after being fired and uh, trying to make those matches a little bit more special uh, with uh, that briefcase being online and trying to see if they can make Hardy a main eventer. I think that was as close as he ever came. I think that uh, later on in, in, uh, in Hardy's career, they came close. I remember JBL out there on commentary calling him a future world champion and a future main eventer. But uh, Hardy sort of gave up on the WWE and uh, which led to his release before that ever could happen. But um, Rhodes versus Sandow. That's my pick that I'm you know, saying could be match of the night. Keep your eye on that one. Hopefully you guys are a little bit invested in it just like I am. But uh, to me, it's not just a filler. It's going to be one of the matches that I'm really involved in, and I hope you guys are too.